and welcome, PML fans. I'm your host, Joseph Moore here, and I'm bringing you the week one recap of PML Draft. And we're going to go ahead and start off with the game of the week for PML week one. Week one, we decided the game of the week would be Tartuots versus Crimson Slayer Fairy. These are the top two predicted teams. Uh, well, not predicted, but rated teams uh, in the draft recap. So uh, we decided to make one versus two. Just happened to be week one, the game of the week. And in this week, CC took the advantage over Joe, not only having a better build to her team, basically, but um, yeah, she had the clear advantage going into this one. I mean, depending on prep, it could have been anyone's game. But uh, we did have it in a CC win with a 2-0 victory. If you want to see that battle, we have it here on Zamora Gaming Channel. Uh, just go to uh, Chartriots versus Crimson Slayer Fairies or go to the playlist for this season's uh, battles. And uh, you'll be able to see that battle there. But more or less, uh, Joe took a pretty quick early lead uh, with Electivire firing off a flamethrower and a scissor did some bolt switching got herself into position to get a zoom rail in front of uh drake Vish, and of course joe being scared of the belly drum uh just goes for the attack on a full health zoom rail, which she decided not to belly drum with and got the kill right there on drake Vish, leaving him with no options for the pokemon in the back of such things like rhyperior and Silvali. All right, let's move on to the next battle here. And we have Coach Steven versus Coach Josh. So we got the Dallas Rockstars versus the Saratoga Sableyes. A Texas showdown here. We have Steven Zamora winning a 5-0 victory over the Saratoga Sableyes. And I'm not sure how that battle went. I didn't get to see the recording. I did talk to Steven, though. He did say uh, he, he started behind a little bit, uh, you know, just pivoting positioning wise. Because, I mean, it's a 5-0 victory. But somehow he was able to get Alolan Raichu in towards the end of the battle and get a Dynamax sweep on Blastoise, Arcanine, and Slowbro. So that is a great outing for the Dallas Rockstar season debut of singles battle. Next up, we have the Dragon Knights versus the Philadelphia Polarath. And Jeremy came out on top with a 4-0 victory over Marquis. We had a fire-filled battle, but sadly ended with, uh, not sadly really, but you know, it came out to be a big victory in the Dragon Knights uh, uh, way, I guess you could say. And a 4-0 victory. He has uh, two kills with Rhydon, two kills with Bisharp, and two kills with Dragonite. And on Polyrath's side, it looks like Aerodactyl was the workhorse there, having two kills. But, um, yeah, I mean, he was able to get a kill on Rhydon and Dragonite, so I'm sure those are two big pivoting options. And then it looks like Bisharp sweeped up at the end. But that is that battle there. Let's go ahead and move on to the next battle. We have the Florida for Alligators, coached by Quake, Quack, Quake, and um, versus Jacob of the Knoxville Kecleon. And that battle was also a 4-0 in the Florida for Alligators' favor. You can see the Pokemon here, how the matchups were, and I'm sure it was a bloodfest. Uh, I'm not sure how much damage output was put onto this team, but... You know, Durant did some work. It shows Ditto with one kill. Durant with two. Porygon with two. And actually, those are some weird stats there because it also shows Mr. Rhyme with two. I'll have to see that about stats later. But, yeah, it, uh, Quack came out on top and getting those kills there. And uh, this is what uh, Jacob had to say going into that battle. Um, he said... And I quote, I was worried about Durant, but severely underestimated Mr. Mind. Cost me Gastronon and Zerkatry early on, as well as my Dynamax Garchomp killed Ryan, but fell to P2. Alakazam fell to Ditto, and Durant cleaned up on aisle 6. 
ice you got to max its attack and attacked but the defense buff from durant were too much so it looks like he did get off that belly drum and he, he was able to uh, get that uh speed boost but all those iron uh max steel moves from durant were able to let it live a plus six attack from that ice key so that was that battle there you can see the matchups here um both scary teams and we'll see how they do in week two all right moving on to the country chinchinos versus the new orleans apes melvin took the victory here looks like con kelder put him in a chokehold and was able to get two kills to finish the game sylveon butterfree hydragon and arachnid all had kills as well Oh, by the way, the, the last battle I just talked about and this battle are both on the Zmore Gaming channel or in the playlist, and you will be able to see those battles. So go ahead and check out how those unfolded there. All right, next up we have Townsville Crocodiles versus the Texas Go Lurks. And it was a blood fest here indeed. Uh, it looks like Jaden just squeaked out a 1-0 victory versus the Texas Golurks. Kenneth. Um, Cinderace racked up three kills but died to its life orb. And Didi got a kill. Faramosa got a kill and it died to Aftermath. So that means Skunk Take on the Golurk side was able to get a kill from death. And Sinta Scorch and Swoobat also got a kill on them. Uh, on the Townsville Crocodiles Pokemon. And as well as Dragapult. I mean, it was a very back and forth battle from what I see. Sadly, we have no video of this, but I'm sure it was a great battle indeed. And that's why it ended up with a 1-0. Next up, we have the Holy Crusaders versus the Blades. And the Blades took the victory here, coached by Matt. And it looks like it was a timer battle. The first timer battle of the season. Looks like the Holy Crusaders with Pukamuku and Halucha, Weezing, Grimmsnarl, Naganadel, and Turtonator didn't have the firepower to get the kills they needed in this battle. Uh, Halucha, Weezing, Weezing, Grimmsnarl all going down to death. And amazingly enough, only Pukamuku got a kill in this battle on the Crusader side. But the Blades had the more defensive team, it looks like, with Kofagrigus dying to Toxic. <clears throat> and everyone else is living through the battle. They're able to endure for that week one timer victory. Sigilyph got a kill. Tyranitar got a kill. And of course, Excadrill got a kill. So that was that battle there. And the Blades are up with that timer victory. Now let's go on to the next battle. And this was the final battle of the week. The Knights versus Morgan's Toronto Tyranitar. And even with the bulk... Uh, on the favoring the Tyranitar side, he was not able to take the victory. Granted to him, he did say he was not able to gen the Pokemon he actually wanted to use in that battle. So he kind of had to throw together the scrap from his PC to make up his team. So I would not hold this victory of a 5-0 against him too heavily. Because we do know <clears throat> Morgan being the most recent champion in single champion, uh, singles draft league. So he will be coming back raring to go in week two. And we shall see how that ends up there. But all in all, that is your week one. Uh, lastly, but not leastly, lead into the kill leader, the most valuable Pokemon, the MVP of week one. And that goes to Charizard of Coach Dusty, the Day Day Night. Week 1 MVP goes to Charizard for going D-Max and sweeping through the Toronto Tyranitars to get 4 kills and a 5-0 victory to start the season off 1-0. Congratulations to Charizard on getting that victory there and hopefully he is able to keep sweeping through the season. Of course, I am a Charizard fan and as long as it's not going against me, I hope it gets all the kills it can get. Alright guys, until next time. We will see you next week for PML Week Recap.